we will study the algorithm for cross correlation using a grayscale image. The grayscale image has values between 0 and 255. We will apply cross correlation to an entire image, but for the purposes of this example, we will apply it to a very small 5x5 five five subset of pixels from the image. The cross correlation algorithm has two inputs the original image and the filter kernel. In this case, the filter kernel is a 3 by 3 Gaussian blur. As all the filter values are positive, this filter has the effect of making a weighted average of all the pixels. The pixel at the center will be weighted higher than its neighbors. We start by working out the top left pixel over which the filter can be centered without the filter going outside the image. For a 3 by 3 filter, this will be the pixel in the second row and second column. We will start a loop that traverses all the pixels in the image apart from those at the border that the filter cannot be centered on. For each pixel, we will work out a sum of the products of the filter and the pixels. For the current pixel, we initialize the sum to be zero. Then we start at the top left of the filter and multiply the filter weight, which is one, by the pixel value, which is 100, and add that to the sum. We move to the next filter weight, which is 3, and multiply that by the corresponding pixel value, 110. Then the third weight on the row, which is 1, and multiply that by the pixel value, 120. We now move to the next row of the filter and do the same for each filter weight on that row. To apply the 3 by 3 filter, we will have 9 multiplications and 8 additions. The sum needs to be stored in an intermediate array of type integer. If the pixel values are 0 to 1 floats, then the sum would also need to be of type float, and the intermediate array would also need to be of type float. At this stage, we can also check whether this sum is greater than the current max or less than the current min. The max and min variables are used in the normalization stage. The loop moves over to the next pixel on the row, and we compute the same operation to give us the intermediate value for the second pixel. For implementation, it would be best to have a function that returns the sum for a particular pixel x, y, and color channel c. The function would be called with the values x, y, and c, and would apply a filter to the pixel at that point. The filter could be passed to the function for full flexibility, including the size of the filter. The function would loop through the filter and multiply it with the underlying pixels as is appropriate before returning the sum. We continue to evaluate the multiplication of the filter with the pixels. We now have the full intermediate array for this example. The stars indicate we could not center the filter at those positions. For a 3 by 3 filter, there will be a 1 pixel wide border all the way around the image. For a 5 by 5, there will be a 2 pixel wide border. A good implementation will cope with any size filter. For the border, we could reduce the size of the image, but this is counterintuitive for users. We could use a single color to indicate the border or pad the image with the correct extra rows and columns beforehand. We could also use the old pixel colors, although this is not sensible for certain filters, or use the nearest known neighbor colors. We could also reduce the size of the filter as we get to the edges of the image. The intermediate array can contain large values. It can also contain large negative values when filters with negative values such as edge detectors are used. To return the image to 0 to 255, we use the process of normalization. We will use a linear mapping from the intermediate values back to the 0 to 255 range, or 0 to 1 range if using the 0 to 1 floats to represent the colors. For the mapping, we already have the minimum and maximum values from the intermediate array. Minimum has to map to 0 and maximum to 255. Normalization is achieved by looping through each pixel and setting its value as follows. The corresponding intermediate value has minimum subtracted from it. This is multiplied by 255 and divided by the range of the intermediate array, which is maximum minus minimum. If mapping from zero to one range, we can omit the 255 because it will be one. 
The resulting image shows the intermediate values after normalization. In coding, we should be mindful that operators are carried out in the correct order and with the correct type for our situation. We could also use the normalization equation to map to ranges other than 0 to 255. For example, we could have a 12-bit display, so we may want to map to 0 to 4096. So far, we studied cross-correlation on a grayscale image. For color images, we simply apply the filter to each of the color channels independently to get three intermediate arrays. During this process, we keep track of the overall maximum and minimum. We do not have independent maximum and minimum for each color channel. Therefore, prior to normalization, we should only have one minimum and one maximum, even though there are three color channels. We now apply normalization in the following way. For each pixel, we normalize the corresponding red, green, and blue intermediate values using a single maximum and minimum using the linear mapping equation. We now place these red, green, and blue values into the appropriate color channel for the pixel. After normalization, we display the new color image.